Welcome to The Messenger. I'm your host, Pastor Mark Banks. I want to welcome you to our broadcast again. We thank God for your coming out, our tuning us in. And let's open up with a prayer today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to bless all those that will see this presentation of your word today. Bless us, grow our faith, and help us to understand your word. Let the Holy Spirit touch each heart. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. We're so glad that you came and joined us again. We want to get right into the word of God because God's word is what causes us to grow. It's our spiritual food, and we want to grow in God. We want the word of God to have its place in our life. It's the bread that we eat, the spiritual bread. So right now we're going to get into the word of God and we're going into the book of Hosea. And our message today is the Hosea paradigm, the Hosea paradigm. Now, when you talk about paradigm, you're talking about an example or you're talking about a pattern. And what we want to talk about today is the Hosea paradigm. And in the book of Hosea, starting at chapter one, Verses 1 through 9, the word of God says this, The word of the Lord came, that came to Hosea, the son of Beri. In the days of Uzziah, Jothan, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jor Jeroboam, and the sons of, of Josh, king of Israel, when the Lord began to speak to Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go take yourself a wife of harlotry and children of harlotry for the lands have committed a great harlotry by departing from the Lord. So God told Hosea to go and take a wife of harlotry, a prostitute wife. He said, because the land, the peoples of the land have cremate, they have, they, they have committed a great harlotry against the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Dilbian, and she conceived and bore him a son. And then the Lord said to him, call his name Jezreel, for in a little while I'll, I'll avenge the bloodshed of Jezreel on the house of Jehu and bring an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. It shall come to pass that in that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. So God told this prophet, this prophet Hosea, to go and take a wife of whoredom, a wife that was a wife that was very unfaithful. And then he said in verse 9 of that first chapter, then God said, call his name, Lo am I. For you are not my people, and I will not be your God. What a terrible place to be where God says, you are not my people, and I am not your God. Israel had gotten to that place. In Hosea, the second chapter, I want to outline something and show something to you right here as we develop this message about the Hosea paradigm. In Hosea's second chapter and the fifth verse, this is what God said. For their mother has played the harlot. She who conceived them has behaved shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers who give me my bread and my water, my wool and my linen, my oil and my drink. And then God said this in verse seven. He said, she will chase her lovers but will not overtake them. She'll go after them, but she will not overtake them. Yes, she will seek them, but not find them. Then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then it was better for me than now. God had prophesied through this man of God a lot of things concerning Israel, but what I want you to see about this the, the, the Hosea paradigm is something very important. Remember this about, let me give you a little bit of background as we get into the word of God today. Hosea lived and ministered in Israel in the days of a divided kingdom. 
He preached during the latter years of Jeroboam the second at a time of great material prosperity. There was a time when they were really prospering materially. Isn't it amazing when we don't have nothing how we can serve God, but when soon as prosperity comes, we tend to turn from the Lord, trust in other things. This was somewhere around 753 B.C. Hosea's mission was both special and painful. This was a special mission that God was giving this man of God, this prophet. It was a special mission, but it also was painful. He was called to experience the anguish caused by an unfaithful wife. This is what Hosea was called to experience. A wife whose sexual adultery mirrored the spiritual adultery of the nation Israel. Her adultery mirrored the spiritual adultery of the nation of Israel, God's chosen people, which he had, they had been unfaithful to the Lord by worshiping idols. Remember, God warned them before they even went into the promised land about what would happen if they got in the land and followed the other nations. But they didn't listen. They didn't listen to what the Lord, their God, had said. So they, 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 they were unfaithful to God by worshiping idols and rejecting God's holiness in his law. The names of the children were chosen by God that Hosea would have with Gomer as reminders of Israel's unfaithfulness. You see, God wants, us to, wants to remind us when we're not faithful to him. He wants us, he wants us to be faithful. But in this, in this story, in the book of Hosea, God is going to do some things here that I want to kind of outline as we go on. One of the things he's going to do is we're going to see the unfaithful wife. We're going to see what it caused, what, what, what God is talking about with this unfaithful wife. We're also going to see what God is talking about with this unfaithful people. Because God's people were being unfaithful. We're also going to see in this, in this little mini-series here, as we get into the book of Hosea, we're going to see how he denounces the sins of the people. And he also announces the doom that will follow. He also affirms the love of God. Because we're going to see, and one of, one of the things I love so much about this story in Hosea is we see a side of God that we need to see. We see the heart of God in this whole thing. We see how God loves. We see a grace that you don't, you, you, we see a grace coming from God that's so powerful. We're also going to see how God disciplines his people. Because he says, if I love you and you want to mind, I will discipline you. Then we also are going to see the blessing of God. Because God is just that way. That is his character. That is his nature. Bible tells us that there was a grace as this prophet started out and God was conveying a message through his life. The Bible tells us that Hosea illustrates very powerfully the concept of grace. We can see grace in the story of Hosea. We can see God's grace, not only his grace, but his mercy. We can see also the total commitment that God has to be faithful. You see, even though we're not faithful, God is going to be faithful. But we can see that total commitment to be faithful to those that he has chosen. If God has called you, if God has chosen you, God is going to be faithful to you. He's going to keep his word. Now, the people of Hosea in, in Israel, uh, I mean, the people of Israel and Hosea's wife were unfaithful in their relationships. They were faith, unfaithful in their relationship with the Lord. But God would remain faithful. God would remain faithful even though they were unfaithful. He still would remain faithful in the word of God, he said. But he's going to first of all discipline Israel but then restoring them to an uh, intimate relationship with himself. Because, see, that's what God wants. God wants an intimate relationship with his people. So we see that in the word of God. 
as we talk about this Hosea paradigm, it's some very important things about it that I want to point out to you. One of them is the unfaithful wife of Hosea. Now, there are many experiences that cause us pain, but one of the most painful of all must be the unfaithfulness of a marriage partner. Many have experienced the unfaithful, unfaithfulness of a marriage partner. For Hosea, who married an adulterous wife, that pain was just something, it wasn't something that was just occasioned by her, by a single fall, but Hosea's wife, Gomer, practiced unfaithfulness. It was like a lifestyle to her. And God was saying something through the life of this prophet and how things went in his life. And ultimately, she left the prophet and their three children to live with a series of other men. Yet Hosea continued to care for her. I tell you, it says something about God. God is living out his relationship. He's demonstrating his relationship with his people as we look at the relationship of Hosea, the prophet, and Gomer, his prostituted wife. So the Bible tells us Hosea had been called by God to demonstrate both God's special pain his personal pain, and his utter faithfulness, his disappointment and his faithfulness. God was disappointed that Israel would not listen. God was disappointed that Israel would not do what God had called them to do, that they would not serve him and love him and worship him the way they were supposed to. God was very disappointed with that. But God was going to demonstrate through the life of this man of God, both the Lord's personal disappointment and his utter faithfulness, even in, the, even in the face of their unfaithfulness, even in the face of their turning against God. Hosea did demonstrate God's character, his commitment, by his continually being faithful to even his prostitute wife. Hosea demonstrated the love of God and how God is being faithful to his wife, even though she was a prostitute, even though she was unfaithful, even though she practiced this. But yet this prophet was faithful. He continued to be faithful, even though she continued to practice her prostitute ways. God must have given Hosea grace to live through this, this ordeal that he was going through. He must have given him a special grace to go through. And I believe he did. That was agonizing experience that Hosea was going through. It was a very agonizing experience. Amen. Now, we don't know how many years Hosea lived this way. We don't know how many years he went through this rejected, feeling agonizing pain, but continuing to love. But it was for a while that this man of God, this prophet, was demonstrating through his life and relationship. He was bringing a message. This was a paradigm. This, is, this, is, this was a message that God was bringing through this prophet's life. So we don't know how long it went on, but he continued, even through the pain and disappointment, he continued to love. Now, in Hosea, the first chapter and the third verse, it says, as it tells us that the prophet was called by God to take to yourself an adulterous wife. To take to yourself an adulterous wife because the land is guilty of the vilest adultery and departing from the Lord. He said to Hosea, I want your life to reflect what Israel is doing to me. I want your life to look like what they're doing to me. I want your life and your wife to, to, to bring to the forefront exactly what Israel is doing to me. And God said through this relationship here that, that they would see and they would experience what God is going through with them. Amen. So the prophet was called to do this. Gomer may have been an active prostitute before she became his bride. We don't know. But we know one thing for sure, she was a woman of the night. 
Amen. And in Hosea 2, God points out something. This is a poem expressing both Hosea and God's feelings as they experience a beloved unfaithfulness. You know, can you imagine what it is, if you've never been through that, to experience the unfaithfulness of someone you really love? Someone you really care about. Someone that you want to reach out to and bless. Someone you want to be around. Someone that you want to be a blessing to. But yet they're unfaithful. Yet they're unfaithful and yet they're, they, they keep pushing you away. They don't want to draw close to you, but they want to continue to push you away. This is what was happening not only in the life of Hosea, but also in the life of of the children of God versus the Lord, with the Lord. So he said that that's what they were experiencing. The choice of adultery to represent the spiritual unfaithfulness was something that God set up so that the people could see it acted out before their very eyes. When God brought Israel into the promised land, he told his people, you see, God always gives us a warning. They were to supplant a corrupt civilization in other words, they were to drive out all of those that were doing these type of things, and they were to be a nation that was to be an example unto God. They were going to be an example unto God. Amen. That's what they were supposed to be. But they, were, they, they would not listen to what God said. But they were, they were, they were worshiping Baal and Astro and others. As an expression of this belief, the worship of the pagan gods, there was, there was pagan gods in the nation. And there, were, there was a lot of ungodliness going on. There were a lot of local shrines and high places where the children of Israel were getting involved. And it was typically marked by drunkenness and orgies and male and female prostitutes joining erotic acts intended to... Uh, to, to, to sexually stimulate their gods, their supposed fertile gods. Amen. That's what it was supposed to be. But by this time, as Israel, that we're talking about here, many of the practices of the Canaanites, their worship were actually integrated in, into and with the worship of the Lord. They, they combined these things. That's why we have to keep the word of God pure. We cannot integrate our worship with cults and, and, and with idols and with other things. Let's keep our worship pure and worship God according to spirit and truth, according to the word of God, like he said. But they integrated things. They mixed it all together. And they celebrated these things. And it was, it was like very terrible in the eyes of the Lord. So many of them were involved in these things in idolatry and, 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 and sexual looseness and, and, and actually all these things were going on in the, in the, amongst the children of God that God loves so much. We're talking about the Hosea paradigm because we can see some examples. The Bible says we ought to draw some examples. We ought to draw some wisdom. We ought to draw some understanding from what is written, that we don't fall in the same places, that we're not guilty of the same things, that we don't go the same way and do the same things as they did, but that we walk in a manner that God is pleased. We walk in a manner where God is worshiped according to spirit and the truth, not integrating it with all kinds of other things. And let me say this, there's so many things going on in the church that God is not pleased with. There's so many things we've let through the door of the church that some churches you can't tell whether it's a church or a nightclub. And God is saying, I want worship. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. We've got to go back to the Bible. We've got to go back to the word of God. We've got to go back to the thing that pleases God. You can't worship God your way. You've got to worship God his way. You can't preach your gospel. You've got to preach his gospel. You can't do it your way. You've got to do it God's way because Jesus Christ is the founder of the church. 
He said, upon this rock I will build my church, not your church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We've got to recognize the fact that the word of God is true. People are getting away from the Bible, but we need to get back to the Bible. It is the word of God. It is God's roadmap. It is his word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not one word of God's word will pass away. Not one jot or tittle. So we need to go back to the word of God and worship God the way he wants to be worshipped. In spirit and in truth. In Hosea's day, they were doing some terrible things. And this is why God brought forth this imagery in what we're talking about through the life of Hosea. He wanted Israel to see this adulterous wife. And the reason why he wanted them to see Hosea because God was saying to them that you're just like her. You're like this adulterous wife that Hosea has married. You're just like her, Israel. I have loved you. I have provided for you. I have blessed you. But yet, you still commit adultery. You go back to your old loves. You go back and you commit adultery with idols. You go back and worship things that are not even God. You give my credit and my glory to somebody else. This was the problem in Hosea's day. As we talk about the Hosea paradigm. And I want to develop this story so that we get the message straight going to take a little while to do that but I want to develop this message so that we get it straight we're going to continue on this message because our time is almost gone in our next session but I want you to continue to join me Israel was an adulterous nation prostituting themselves with other gods gravitating to them things that are not God's. I remember one thing that the Lord said that was so touching. He said, go out and take a field trip, Israel. Go to all the heathen nations and ask them this. Has any one of them ever changed their gods? And you will find that none of them, if they were worshiping Baal, they were still worshiping Baal. He said, but you, you have changed your God. You have the living God, but you have changed your God. What a terrible indictment against the children of Israel. But we want to develop this a little bit more in our next broadcast as we get into the Hosea paradigm. But right now, I want to take this last few minutes that I have left to challenge you. Do you know Jesus? Have you repented of your sins and have you called upon the name of the Lord and asked him to come into your life, forgive you of your sins? The Bible says that if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. With a heart a man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins, that he's risen from the dead? And if so, call upon him and ask him to forgive you of your sins. We don't know how long it will be before the Lord's coming, but boy, I'll tell you, we sure see a lot of signs. I think now is a very good time for you to get right with God. Don't wait until you get everything in line. Come as you are. For God will deliver you. He'll break every yoke. He'll set you free. If the sun sets you free, you're free indeed. He will give you of his spirit. The spirit of God will lead you into all truth and righteousness. He'll be the comforter that will come alongside you and walk beside you. He'll be in you and beside you and you'll be in him. He'll give you power over all the power of the devil. God will give you everything and God's grace is everything you need to live for the Lord. So maybe you say, I can't live this life. No, you can't. But Christ can live it through you. God's power is available to us. So I say to you today, if you want Jesus to come into your life today, call upon him today. Don't put it off. In the day in which you hear my voice, the Lord said, harden not your heart. This is the day of salvation. This is your moment. 
to get right with God. I'm going to pray a prayer for you right now that Jesus will come into your life. Heavenly Father, I pray right now, those who are seeing this, this messenger telecast, touch their hearts and open their hearts. Holy Spirit, bring a conviction upon them right now that they will call out upon the name of the Lord to be saved, that they will repent of their sins and ask Jesus to come in. There's salvation in no other. There's no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus. There is no other way but God. God is the answer. You can search the whole world. You'll never find another answer. God is the answer for you. So I want you to accept the Lord today. Let him come into your life and save you. And you'll never be the same again. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Because once you taste, you're going to want some more. You're going to want the Lord like you've never wanted him before. There will be a hunger there for Jesus. So I just want to say to you, God bless you. And we hope to see you again here on The Messenger. Till next time, God bless you.